sketches and, and reality of uh, notable black American women. Yeah. And uh, now what are you planning on doing in terms of the publication uh, with that? Uh, uh, what are some of the uh, uh, things that you've seen as the possibilities for this uh, massive work, uh, Dr. Smith? This book can serve so many purposes. Um, already, it, it is uh, it is very uh, important for uh, as as a uh, reference for courses uh, in in black literature, black history, on um, black themes, uh, especially when the student has to do some biographical work. Uh, it's good for just leisure reading. As I have introduced the book to people, as they've learned about it, they they just start reading it, and it's it's a good. A good work just to, to, to browse. You will know some of the women, but there are many who will not be known. And, and uh, for those who are not known, I'm, I really want to introduce them to the public. Uh, for those who are known, maybe there's something that you don't know about the person we've been able to find. Uh, it, it is good, uh, let's say, for Nashville. If you want to know who are some of the important people in Nashville from the earliest time that we could document to the present, we've done that. Um, if you want to know who's important in politics or in, uh, in the arts or whatever, we try to tell you who they are, who some of them are at least. Let's talk about some of those notable black American women. I'm Dr. Smith, and I'm sure that uh, you have your favorite uh, uh, person and, or persons. Uh, and, and let's talk about those and, and some of the contributions that you think that they made. One of my um, um, favorite women was Anna Murray Douglas. And of course, you know the name Frederick Douglass, and people generally know the name Frederick Douglass, but they may not know Anna, may not even know he was married unless they choose to read his biography or autobiography. And he certainly mentions uh, Anna in, in his work, but uh, I think she's somewhat an appendage to him, uh, almost always an appendage to him, as I guess many people would be for a person who was so well known. But Anna Mur Murray Douglass uh, bought uh, his freedom. Yeah, I'm not sure whether or not he would have been freed otherwise, but she bought his freedom. Uh, together, they, well, uh, they were not actually together, but they, they both went from, from the Baltimore area up east, and from there he became, uh, they, they moved in the, social, in the circles with the anti-slavery groups, and uh, he became a, quite an orator. Um, she was a, a home person, but, but quite an astute businesswoman because she ran a shoe binding business. She kept up with the family's finances. Uh, she, she participated in the women's arms of those anti-slavery groups. When they moved to Rochester, this work was going on. She saw to it that he was impeccably dressed when he went out. Um, she became, uh, well, the, the Douglases had an underground railroad station in their Rochester home, mm -hmm. and it's, it's clear that she must have been the manager of that station because he was gone a lot. Mm -hmm. And since the station was always open um, and so many people went through there, mm -hmm. she must have been the one who, who managed that Dr. station. Dr. Smith, why don't you explain what an underground railroad uh, was at the time? I think you've mentioned since the station was already open, I think that we might get the impression that uh, perhaps Frederick Douglass had a station, uh, a train station, but why don't for some of those young persons, and or not only young persons, but persons who might not understand exactly what you're talking about in terms of the Underground Railroad, and, and I think that way they'll have a greater understanding of the significance of what mm -hmm. she was doing. Well, this was certainly during the period of slavery, and uh, in the slave states, of course, slavery was, was legal. Uh, slaves rebelled against that, and they escaped. And when they escaped, they went to the free states. Uh, and there was always a station. There were stations along the way to receive them, to help the slaves along the way. And that's what was in, happening in Rochester. Many of those people went on to Canada and other places from there. So uh, that's what, not, not a physical building mm -hmm. as such with a sign up station, but uh, um, an activity, more or less. And, and, and so, but what about some of the women in Nashville? I know that, uh, and I've had an opportunity to look through the book, and I know that you also highlighted uh, uh, quite a number of uh, black women in the state of Tennessee, as well as in the city of Nashville. And let's talk about some of those uh, in the state of Tennessee that you believe are, of, and I, I would imagine some are well known and some are not as uh, well known. Why don't you talk about some of those uh, in Tennessee as well as in Nashville here? All right, in Tennessee there's Ida Wells Barnett, who was quite a newspaper woman and um, was an activist, a feminist, and she did a lot to promote the work of, of black women as well as the freedom and the rights of black people had to leave Memphis, of course, because uh, things were getting hot down there for her at the time. But she certainly um, is, is inscribed in the annals of anyone's history book uh, when it comes to um, the rights of blacks and journalism. Mm -hmm. Another one was Julia Hooks, who was from Memphis, 
a beautiful woman, a physically beautiful woman. She um, was a teacher, and her field was music. She had a music school, in fact, and W.C. Handy was one of her students. Mm -hmm. She was the grandmother of Benjamin Hooks, um, NAACP fame. Mm -hmm. um, in Nashville, there were several. Uh, one was Ella Shepard Moore, one of the Fisk Jubilee singers. Now, we hear a lot about the singers, and perhaps we've heard a lot about Ella Shepard. Mm -hmm. That's the name she's perhaps uh, better known by, by Shepard. But I particularly liked her because she, too, had been born in slavery. Uh, her mother threatened to throw her in the river rather than, as many, many uh, slave mothers did, rather than have her grow up in slavery. The, the family separated because of slavery. The mother was sent to uh, Alabama, I think, while the father stayed here. Um, she, the freedom did not come. He uh, then married, later on married. Uh, he had moved away with, with Ella. Uh, Ella became interested in music, apparently had a talent there, and, and uh, learned to become uh, quite adept at it. She came back to Nashville, studied at Fisk, uh, became uh, very important in the singers as um, sort of a manager or something of that sort. Took them on, to, went with the, to the, the singers on when they toured Europe. Um, her diaries are very important because they talk about the, the culture of that area and how they were treated there. They, they, um, uh, her, her writings, she did, had other writings, people may not know about that. She had views on women, on the, on the black woman, and how important she was. And the touching part of this is that later in life, Ella and her mother were reunited, and uh, they lived together on, in a house on the Fisk campus until the mother died, until all of them died. Another one uh, was Nettie Napier. We uh, know the name Napier, James C. Napier from the mm -hmm. James C. Napier Housing Project mm -hmm. here or his association with the Black mm -hmm. Bank here, but we don't know Nettie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were quite an attractive couple, a prominent couple in Washington circles and in Nashville circles. Mm -hmm. But um, some of the women of that period were important in their own right, and she was certainly active in the rights of women and, and uh, was interested in, in uh, improving the care of black families and uh, black children, and, and uh, we know her for that reason. Um, another one was, um, um, say something about Billy Hale. Oh, that's uh, because the one I think, yeah. I